Yeah. Because we don't have the resources to provide no, no. all of the. Uh, it's just something you can see. I know from Python that you experience, particularly where they've got C libraries that support dependencies as well. For example, if you want to use Python imaging library, it expects yeah. lib, JPEG, lib, uh, lib, zip, lib, P, uh, lib PNG, etc. Or you might have something that requires lib SSL. And of course, the Python doesn't doesn't necessarily install this for you, so you need some way of handling it. Fortunately, the Python thing at the, at the moment is not to get the operating system to support, install your modules. We have the, the virtual environment, which effectively is a symlink out on it, and you can install locally all the packages you need. That thing, you still have the problem with the C libraries. Sure, well, that, that's mostly the uh, declaration problem. Like right? yeah. Python would have to declare that it's going to install something now that requires something. Yeah. So you have to communicate with the package management team, and that could. Then just say yes, I can do that for you, or yeah, okay. tell the user it doesn't work. And the other question I had was the idea that it checks uh, stuff is updated, particularly if say you've got a multi user system and you said if the user installs a more recent library in home packages, then for some version, say a more recent version of API was installed, then that would be taken care of. But that's because home is closer to the user. What happens if it's the other way around if the system library has updated? So the user has installed some version in home. The system also has it running and has a more recent version. Well, um, which, win which wins? It's always the one. Okay. Okay. There are situations where, of course, things can clash. So that's not really that clear. I mean, I mean, it's not really easy to determine that. Yeah. Um, but it's really difficult to solve that situation. Yeah. What do you do? You know, you have to tell the user, and then it gets really complicated. You open a really large dialog and tell them, "Oh, look at um, this package there, which depends on that, and that is solved by." Come and that means the crisis will be pure, locally installed, whatever. Mm. I, it's mm -hmm. not really a, like to be a current problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You really need. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's probably not going to be a problem for us because um, we expect to provide most of the packages in our code repository. Yeah. We control that, so we can kind of make sure that all fits together. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you compile your software and install it somewhere, things can go wrong. Looks good. Uh, given that how you order is pretty much another uh, in house solution, would it be worthwhile for individuals to research other existing? Package building tools and to see if they can be more useful and more compatible with the, the direction that we want to take that before. Like, uh, like um, for instance, the current uh, app files for they're very specific and from my limited uh, experience in exposure them, they seem to be extremely fragile. Um, in, the, in its current design, so uh, you know, I, I don't know. If, I'm, I'm basically curious if you know how other, if anyone knows how other organizations manage package building, and if that's something that we want to be better in the long run to use another existing solution. And, uh, yeah, that's actually the touching the really power. Because uh, activating a store in the case for the package, this is the easy part. Building them is the easy part. And um, because you need to make sure that they're consistent. I mean, the setting, uh, all the packages in the repository must be consistent. And that over time, like the next word package must, well, must be, must match the expectations from all the other 
applications that use that library. So you really have to uh, make sure that it's consistent, and you use consistent configuration options and stuff like that. And I don't think it's that much a question of a tool. It's much more a problem of, really of the people um, building packages. And um, of course, there is some infrastructural help, like, especially like rules. I mean, Debian has a um, large set of policies, building policies, which define how do you, you know, approach a new package, what do you do, what configuration options do you see, and, and then we have to document that somewhere, we have to put it somewhere in some kind of recipe. I mean, we have that, we have some kind of recipe um, format, which probably is going to change. I mean, it was saying that RPM spec is, seems to be capable to do that if we need, but um, the I mean, we will probably, in the end, we will probably use existing formats and maybe even existing, well, we should look at the way Debian does it because they have a very good reputation. Um, and it's their infrastructure that has earned them this reputation. Yeah, there's no need to, uh, to, uh, to uh, research dependencies that are already expressed in the, the Debian data. Already, but well, yes, you're right, but you have to say sometimes that they, 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 they are, yeah. that they are, and, and it actually matches what we need. I mean, yeah. that's it. But, um, but we need some kind of similar set of pretty strict hierarchy of information, and it's, um, we can't really continue to you know, just see a new version of organization. Build it, publish it. It's not going to work. That's the way. And so, but it's hard. That we, I mean, there are so many different software out there, and so many hard to find, difficult to find dependencies between all those packages. That's a continuous, um, well, task. And it's really cool to learn by doing like this. But I don't think there will be one big tool that does it all for us. And we can't really use the DBM infrastructure directly because it's a mess. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. It's a lot of shell scripts that nobody really understands. It, it just works for DBM, it works decent for them, but it can't work for us. Is there going to be an option to have to use the packages but in a sort of like ports thing? So you just get the metadata and the compiling the building runs on the local machine. Would that be? And it is hybrid ports, basically. Yeah. I mean, you can just. We will use that kind of infrastructure, and the server, then we will use one, one server, like a set of servers that will just build the tree continuously. Yeah. So we notice when something goes wrong. And then if there's a conversion, you just throw that in there and you wait until it's built. And then, if it works, you take the package out and put it in some testing repository. Or, alternatively, you can just download the hybrid ports tree onto your local machine. And then, you have your own packages which are in there, or you can just add packages there to build it, and then provide it to the ports. So it's pretty much the same uh, as the ports tree, but it is being used to generate packages, binary packages. From I mean, you, you get this on BSD if you run the minus T flag. That if it'll, if there's a if there's a binary package, it'll take that. Otherwise, it builds it for you. Okay. I mean, it's it's, it's like that for all large uh, Linux distributions. I mean, it's just not as visible because it happens on the service, but they all have this kind of tree, and um, they you know just declare packages and they, they build them. And Great, they are repositories. Uh, another question. Oh, uh, also related to packages and building packages. Currently, right now, Hyper supports only, uh, as far as I know, only pushes for one type of configuration of package. Now, 
let's say, for example, uh, let's say let, uh, VLC, where it has certain options which shouldn't be utilized in our normal versions of Haiku to uh, add in legal issues, what is it like uh, let, uh, the, the library for DB playback? Is, are we going to try and uh, cater to have different configurations of the same software to meet different needs as far as uh, you know, th this is the ideal package. This package has this feature enabled or this debugging features enabled, this variance. Right. Is that going to be something? that is worth looking into is uh, not a priority or uh, no. <coughs> I think it's worth looking into it. But the problem is um, it's, that's we really have to strike a balance between um, flexibility, like we have to and you can naturalize three different versions of the video lab client. But in the end, the user wants to install software. And what do you do then? And you can, of course, then limit the selection in GUI and have some kind of, you know, I think most of your standard packages, and then you just present one video on the and that's the one for installing. But if we don't do that, I mean, we're close, getting closer to Linux, and we then offer three different kinds of Deal on client or other <coughs> repositories, and then there will be other repositories from other, other sites that provide other software. So it's really hard to say, but that's basically that is uh, two part of the um, building policy that we want. I mean, we could say um, we have. Uh, a call um, Haiku or a call Haiku repositories, we never do that. We only select the decent, the best settings, standard settings, provide packages for it. And if somebody wants something else, we can uh, do a optimized or whatever extravaganza software repository that then um, contains stuff that isn't for more standard user um, consumption. And if you're interested, you can just subscribe to the repository. Well, yes, it's going to be able to find it to the end library. And then, yes, it does. But then, uh, when you drop a folder in the page, you just uh, crash it because it uh, we didn't remember it. So we didn't have the correct library loaded for the well, right, well, that was just a uh, warning example. Yeah, yeah. Well, well usually that's the kind of stuff that's supposed to be, um, should be able to be uh, downloaded in separately as other packages as plugins on. Right. It really be, it's cleaner than in several directions. Now, uh, I was looking at the to do page on the. <coughs> Would it be possible to also include uh, the uh, you know, the status of the new notes on that? Because I think that might also be uh, beneficial for a wider audience to know, you know, you know the larger, you know, generalized definition of the status to which it's not. Okay. Thanks very much. It's very interesting. It's good. How much work is this going to go? How much work do you think is still in this series? Lots, yeah, lots. <laughs>